Good afternoon from Disney Springs. We're here today because there's a few things that I wanted to check out. Check on the progress of Gideon's. There's a change that happened over by Splitsville that I wanted to look into. Also, I heard some rumors and a few people saying that they felt less safe at Disney Springs than they did at the theme parks. Like maybe people weren't following mask protocols, people were crowding around. I'm interested to see what the feeling of Disney Springs is like too. And just kind of walk around and have a look around. We're at Disney Springs. Let's go inside. So the very first thing that happened as I was walking in right before temperature check, a family was coming up the escalators and the cast member said, do you guys have your mask? And the guy goes, yeah. And she goes, okay, make sure you have it on before you reach the next cast member. And he's like, it's required outside? Yeah, so just wanted to let you guys know that that is the case. That is the rules for Disney Springs. They require masks inside, outside, the entire time that you're here at Disney Springs, you're required to wear a mask. All right, so we are here at Disney Springs. You all know what we like to do. We like to go all the way down to Cirque du Soleil and start our journey there. So let's head down to Cirque du Soleil. So here we are down by Cirque du Soleil, and we still don't have a definitive answer on Drawn to Life. A little while ago, all the news sites were reporting that tickets were on sale for November 5th. I just checked, tickets are on sale for November 17th now. I don't know if that means that November 5th through 17th sold out, or if they've moved the opening date or the first ticket sold to November 17th. Uh, we can only wait and find out. Also, this side of Disney Springs is empty. And I believe that that's mostly because the surface lots, like this lot over here, is called the strawberry lot and that's closed right now you can't park in the strawberry lot i think that there are some contractors that are doing construction work that are parking over here but regular day guests cannot park in the strawberry lot so that kind of makes this side of disney springs pretty empty which makes me feel bad for city works because they are open serving food and serving drinks although it would be nice to come to city works and eat and it looks like you could do that and maintain pretty good physical distance from everybody. Same thing with the House of Blues restaurant. Lots of tables available. Just to give you guys an idea, it's 110 on a Thursday afternoon. Also, it's 94 degrees outside. The NBA experience is still closed, but it looks like you can see some games that are happening. I believe that these are WNBA games that are scrolling across right now. Where is the WNBA playing? I know that the NBA is playing here at Disney at some of the hotels, but where's the WNBA playing? It is kind of strange that the NBA experience has all of the markings as if they could be open, like the exit only, and the physical distancing markers here at the entrance, but they're not open. This was also one of the perks that we heard was gonna be available for the NBA players to come and play at the NBA experience. So maybe they're just leaving it closed so that one day they could come out here and play? I don't know how they would get here though and come to Disney Springs and stay within the NBA bubble that they say they are in staying at the resorts. So just looking in on the M&M store, not a lot has changed on the outside. I'm sure there's a lot going on on the inside, but it just looks like a bunch of demo happened where they just took off the entire front of the building here. Other than that, nothing else that we can see. One of the interesting turn of events here at Disney Springs, Splitsville is open. The bowling alley is open. It doesn't look like they're currently open, but I do know that they did reopen with advanced cleaning measures, which I mean, bowling sounds fun. But you see they took off the hours on the door though. Huh. Yeah, they're not open right now. So after looking online, it looks like their hours are pretty limited. So during the week, Monday through Friday, they're open from four until 9 p.m. And then on Saturday and Sunday, they're open from noon until 9 p.m. So not a lot of hours here at Splitsville. Still no word on Haleo opening back up. And then it looks like we still don't have any sort of visible progress on Beatrix which I could understand that probably being put on hold for a little bit because, I, oh, well, I, okay. So yeah, I bet you you could be building in there and then hopefully open by the time that all of this ends. But who knows? Maybe you don't have the money, like the excess money to like actually work on it right now. So who knows what's gonna happen with Beatrix. So AMC theaters, last time that we were here, we said it's gonna open on July 30th. Today's July 30th and it's not open. So I have no idea when the AMC theater will reopen. And I looked on their website and it just said, soon, reopening soon. Let's see what the movies they say are now showing are. Call of the Wild, Birds of Prey, Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, and Onward. Some older movies for sure. Look at how long these posters have been up here. They're all wilted from the sun. So in between the AMC and Splitsville, this walkway to the Orange Garage is now reopened 
Kind of looks like they did some sort of French drain over here. Like maybe they were having a problem with flooding and they've installed pavers and some pebble work or rock work over here, which leads me to believe that it's a French drain. Maybe, yeah, they were having flooding issues. So I had this theory that the pop gallery was gonna be the location of Everglazed Donuts. And I'm starting to think that that theory might be true based on some of the signage we have out front. They're having a huge sale in the pop gallery. Maybe a going out of business sale? I should also note that this entrance into Disney Springs is now reopened from the Orange Garage. And now from the AMC, we're gonna turn in this direction back towards the rest of Disney Springs. And one huge thing that we can see here is all of the signage for Ample Hills is gone. We did receive word that Ample Hills is not gonna be opening here or reopening on the boardwalk. So that doesn't mean that this can't be another ice cream shop, but we do know that it's not gonna be in Ample Hills. One day I will be out here and this hot dog truck will be open and I'll be able to eat a hot dog. Today is not that day. And then maybe a mac and cheese. I'm not a huge fan of mac and cheese, but chicken parmesan mac and cheese sounds good. Barbecue beef mac and cheese sounds good. I would try it. What is this? Are these little shrimps? Is this the lobster one? Oh, that looks intense. So after doing a little bit of research, I did find that before everything shut down, this truck opened at 5 p.m. normally on weekdays definitely not 5 p.m. so I don't know if they are still opening now that everything's reopened or if they're just leaving them shut for right now. Does anybody know? Leave me a comment if you know if the hot diggity dogs truck is open. We're now near Disney style and there's a few things that we can see through the window that are new to me. Like take for instance this Disney mom hat. This one's got ears and polka dots. This one doesn't have any ears or polka dots. I feel like I should get that for Jen. And then they got a Disney dad hat too. Same thing, it's Disney Dad, and then it's got the ears, and then they've got one next to it that doesn't have the ears. These are some fun button-up shirts too. Look at this, they got some Pride Mickey, and we got Figment. We got Hey Hey over here. We got the Grape Soda. We got Orange Bird, and then the one in the middle, I know that this seems a little bit ridiculous, but these are trash cans. Disney trash cans on a shirt. Seems like a shirt that Forky would wear. Some other things that I haven't seen before are this spirit jersey with Disney balloons on it. And it says Walt Disney World on the arms. You got this tank top from Her Universe that has a Mickey ear band on it. It's like a purple gradient to white. This is nice. It's a Her Universe shirt. It's kind of like a vintage ringer style shirt with an embroidered castle on it. Yeah, this pocket tee with a Mickey premium bar with a bite taken out of it coming out of the pocket. this visor over here too with some mickey balloons on it well this is fun it's a disney birds line it says birds of a feather on the shirt and then it's got matching leggings with all kinds of different disney birds on it how many of these birds can you name i could i, I mean off the top of my head zazu and hey hey for sure oh and scuttle too you can see scuttle i wonder if the bird from pocahontas that hummingbird has a name some of them i don't think have names so after going into the tribute store yesterday at Universal, I feel like I could go into a store here at Disney Springs. I don't think I'm gonna go into Disney style just because it's a smaller store. I might pop into World of Disney for at max 10 minutes in and out real quick to see if we can find anything that's new merch. As we're getting closer to the area that has the majority of the restaurants at Disney Springs, I am gonna be looking around for restaurants that have secluded seating or just some place that is secluded that we can eat at. So I wanted to address people not feeling safe at Disney Springs. I guess maybe I just come in the middle of the day when, I mean, there's not very many people here anyways, so I feel pretty safe. I wanted to show everybody the Gideon's walls and give you all an idea of what some of the cookies look like from Gideon's. Oh yeah, this is gonna be real nice. If you remember, we made a chocolate chip cookie and tried to fashion it after Gideon's, theirs has way more chocolate chips on it than ours did. Let's see what other kind of cookies they have. Ooh, this looks like maybe a snickerdoodle or something. Whoa, that looks amazing. What else? What is this? I don't know, but I am interested to try it. Maybe butterscotch? Another thing to note is one of the last times that we were here, we said that Jock Lindsay's closed, but it is back open now. So you can eat at Jock Lindsay's and you can get drinks because they changed the rule before it was 50% food, and now it is if you serve any food at all. And here are the food options that they have. 
here at Jock Lindsay's. We actually did a video showing when they had a special menu here for Ant-Man, and we tried some ridiculously large things, like a gigantic hamburger, and we'll put a link to that video in the description down below. Oh no, we came to Wine Bar George once during one of these special Disney Springs seasonal events, and they had this Iberico pork pluma on the menu, and it was the most delicious pork I've ever had in my life. So good. If you get a chance to come to Disney Springs and eat at Wine Bar George, and you like pork, highly, highly, highly recommend this dish. All right, so after looking at the menu and remembering how good the pork was at Wine Bar George, I caved. I'm looking up at this balcony where there's outdoor seating, and there's nobody out here. So I can be physically distant from everybody. Uh, there are people inside the restaurant on the other side of the glass, but there's nobody out here. And all the servers are wearing masks, and, and you can see down there, like, even the people that are near me are still far away. They're down a whole level and everybody's wearing masks down there. It feels good. So I'm getting the Iberico Pork Pluma. I'm so excited. This was one of the best things that I've ever had at Disney Springs. I'm so glad that it's on the full lunch menu now. Also, we can get a good view into Gideon's from up here. So there's not really anything happening down there, but we can see behind the construction walls of Gideon's. Yeah, yeah, we can't, I mean, there's nothing really happening. That's what the backside of construction walls look like though. This is a little side note. They brought me a bag to put my mask in so that I don't have to set it on the table. And they got me a soda water, and this is one of those agave straws. So it's not a paper straw, but it is biodegradable, which is nice. And there it is, my Iberico Pork Pluma. Man, this is one of the best dishes I have ever had at Disney Springs from one of our favorite restaurants at Disney Springs, and this is Wine Bar George. I cannot wait to dig into this. I'm so excited. Okay, let's do it. All right, you guys know my rules. I sanitize before taking off my mask. Okay, and then I've got my bag here. Put my mask in. Oh dear. Okay, a little windy for the little baggy thing. Okay, and now my mask is in a bag. Sanitize again. I'm excited for this. It does feel nice to be like at a restaurant. I wouldn't eat inside in our current environment, but it feels nice to be able to be somewhere that's so secluded from everybody else and so, I don't know, open air. I'm so darn excited for it. I want it to be like, I want it to last forever, just from what I remembered. That is so good. It's so tender and so buttery. It just falls apart in your mouth. And it's got the char on the outside from where they grilled it. So the last time that we were here and this was on the menu, we actually ordered two of them because it was so good. Oh. I like hardly even have to chew it. It's so tender. Just like melts in your mouth. People often describe steaks as melt in your mouth. And I have never, and I've eaten a lot of steaks. Well, okay, so the only steak that I've ever had that melts in, that melted in my mouth was in Japan at Tokyo Disney Sea. We had Wagyu there and that melted in my mouth. This Iberico pork melts in my mouth. It just disappears. So good. And the, the, the pluma sauce, delicious. It's not a vinaigrette, not like a balsamic, but it has that, you know how like the umami of a balsamic where you put it in your mouth and you're like, like your taste buds kind of like do a little dance and then you kind of salivate a little bit. That's what this sauce does. It's like a, almost like a pork mushroom sauce, like nice and salty and thick, but not grainy like mushroom sauces can get sometimes. This is so good. I want to eat this every day of my life. And I would be happy doing it. Like this is the best that I've had in a long, long time. This makes me feel so good inside. Also, I've had a Birico ham before, like the cured meats style ham, and it's not as good as this. This is so good. Wow. 
Man. I, I'm like raving. 100%. Get this pork. If you come to Wine Bar George and don't get this pork. How is everything? Oh, really good. Thank good you. Here. Yeah. This and the steak frites, two best things that I've had at Disney Springs. And I know that this menu is not very big as far as food goes. It's more, it's a wine bar. Like, the guy that owns this place, George, he's here. I saw him on the way up. Um, he's a, he's a, a sommelier, so he's all about wine. But he knows how to pick some food, too, because this is good and the steak frites, delicious. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be quiet now and just finish eating. I had to turn the camera back on because I got to the potatoes. These potatoes are awesome. They're like... They're like lightly fried potato slices. Still kind of like al dente on the inside. Oh. Like just done. You know how potatoes can get kind of dry if you overcook them and kind of fill your mouth? These are not doing that. Perfectly cooked. And they go with this sauce so well. This is awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. Like I was trying to figure out what to do because I like, I missed this pork so much. And it just overcame me and I'm like, I'm doing it. Going up there, I saw that there was all this open space with nobody up on the upper deck. And I was like, I gotta do it. So I did it and I'm glad that I did. I feel totally safe doing it too. I don't have any menu, they didn't ever give me a menu. You're supposed to do it on your phone. Um, but I saw it on the A-frame outside and I was like, I know what I want. And then the server has been doing great. He hasn't been like, he's been kind of stopping far away from the table and everything is is the the silverware was all with a uh, package with like a paper napkin no reusable napkins I, don't, I feel really good about eating here I would do this again for lunch and that was nice it's like a nice light lunch too that was it I'm all done Wow delicious well that was something I was not expecting to do today number one I didn't think that they still had the pork on the menu Number two, I didn't think that I was going to be able to find a place that was so secluded to eat at outside. And it turned out to be at Wine Bar George up on the second floor. It felt good. It was nice to be able to eat that pork again, feel kind of normal, but still be safe. Fantastic. I highly recommend that pork at Wine Bar George. Let's go walk around some more. Oh, I'll have to look back at our tours of Disney Springs, which will be linked in the description down below, but both of these booths here are closed. One of them used to be a place called Pop Art that sold like pop-up greeting cards. It's a really neat store, but looks like it's no longer there. I don't know what's going on inside of this one right here. It kind of looks like they're either stocking or putting away merchandise in there. So back into Disney Springs here, where we came from was Kind of back there, there's T-Rex Cafe. And we're over here by Uniqlo, which has reopened. Last time we were here, it was closed, but they have reopened now. You can see people inside Uniqlo. Oh, here's that Aloha. This is a, the mini version, but I wore the Aloha Mickey shirt the other day to Hollywood Studios. I love me some Uniqlo shirts, they're fantastic. All right, we are over here by World of Disney. Let's kind of peek inside and see what the crowd level's like in there. Because it definitely is busier on this side of Disney Springs, so. We'll have to see how busy it is inside a world of Disney. I don't know, man. Like, this is a whole different game. Look at all of the people just kind of funneling in. Nobody's maintaining social distance on the way in. Yeah, I'm not gonna go inside a world of Disney. Like, I want to, but it just doesn't, like, look at this. It just doesn't look safe. Oh no, there used to be a Four Rivers food truck out here. What happened to it? Where'd the food truck go? Is it gone? So Disney Springs is kind of strange because all the way over from Cirque du Soleil all the way to like Wine Bar George, even a little bit towards T-Rex Cafe, felt totally fine. Not a lot of people around, people wearing their masks correctly. Once I started getting closer to World of Disney and this side of Disney Springs, more people were wearing their masks down, people were not socially or physically distancing. It was strange that there was a difference between the two sides of Disney Springs. I do realize that there are more people over here on this side and like there's more stores and more grab and go type places where you can get a beer or a drink or something like that. Speaking of getting a drink, 
there are the cast members that are selling drinks at the carts have these new signs that say please wear your mask at all times unless you are eating or drinking while stationary i talked to a cast member they said that it really helps because they instead of uh like confronting somebody they can just say excuse me and then point to the sign and then the person will either like hold up their cup like oh i'm drinking and then they point back to the sign and say wall stationary uh or they just hold up the sign and the people are like oh yeah and they fix their masks so it seems like that's been a good thing for them is these little signs but also it is strange that this area down here by world of disney is a totally different vibe than the area say between cirque du soleil and disney style and the starbucks area it's just a different feeling and i don't understand why it doesn't look like there's much to see at lululemon oh actually they put up a sign they got the actual signs up for Lululemon. So it's opening, opening summer of 2020, which is right now. So I would imagine they'd be opening soonish. Yeah, it looks like they got the lights on inside. And then here is the, the little sign on the side and then the big sign up top. Side note, both places that stormtroopers normally have been, I haven't seen them at all, but there is a long line at Ever After Jewelry Company and I don't know why. Usually that corresponds with a new release of something. But I don't know what was released. And we made it back over by the AMC Theater and the Orange Garage. I think we're going to call it a day. It's a pretty good day. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Disney Springs to kind of look around, look at some of the construction, do a little news update. And then we found the best meal ever. The Iberico Pork Pluma at Wine Bar George. So delicious. I mean, I can't stop raving about it. Highly recommend it. If you come here and you're looking for something to eat, Wine Bar George, one of our favorite restaurants in all of Disney Springs. There'll be a bunch of links in the description down below to different videos that are from our trips out to Disney Springs. And one video in particular where we talked about our favorite restaurants, Wine Bar George is in there. So, I don't know, check it out. Fantastic, fantastic day. It made me feel good just being there and it feeling so safe and being able to eat one of my favorite things ever. I don't know, it was a great day. So with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to help. So today's organization that we want to shine a spotlight on is the ASPCA or the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And I'm just going to read right off the website here. This organization was founded on the belief that animals are entitled to kind and respectful treatment at the hands of humans and must be protected under the law. Another key issue that the ASPCA helps with is animal homelessness. We adopted both of our dogs, Armani and Bandit, through the ASPCA, and it holds a special place in our heart. So we really appreciate the work that they're doing, and we hope that you guys will take a look at the link in the description down below, talk about it, share it with your friends and family, just learn a little bit more about the ASPCA and what they're doing to help with animals. And thank you guys for watching this video.